right now I'm going to show you how to take this picture and turn it into a nighttime scene, including shadows from the leaves on the trees. Hey Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from PhotoshopCafe.com and this week I've got another tutorial for you. I'm going to take this book, I'm going to show you how to put type on it and I'm going to show you how to turn it from a day scene into a night scene and then I'm going to show you how to create gobos which is how I get those shadows that look like they're coming from the leaves on trees. So this is continuing our series on the lighting effects inside of Photoshop. This is part six or seven so check out all the other videos if you like this. And um, also I'm going to start a new thing. I'm going to do a beginner's uh, tutorial once a week. So let me know if that's something you're interested in and also what day would be best for you for that beginner's one. All right, let's continue right now with this one. So here's a picture of a book that I grabbed from Adobe Stock and I'll put a link up for the uh, image. And by the way, all the tutorials I do here, I usually have a written component on photoshopcafe.com so you can follow along there if you like the written word. All right, let's just drop some type in here really quick. This is not the focus of the tutorial, but I figured you might want to know how to add type. And I've used type, but it could be pictures, it could be anything you want. So why don't we just create a block of type. I'm grabbing the type tool and I'm just going to click and drag out just a rectangle and Photoshop will fill this with placeholder text. Now, if you are in Photoshop CS6 or earlier, you're just going to have to go under, I believe it's type, and then it's filled with placeholder text here, which is the paste lorem ipsum. So just use that. If you're in Photoshop CC or 2020, then you'll be fine. All right, let's choose a font that looks a little bit more romantic than Proxima Nova, which is, is cool. I mean, it's a, it's a good font. I like it. But let's grab something a bit more scripty like this and uh, obviously we want to change the color so <laughs> let's just select it by the way just um, quadruple click to select all that block of text I don't know if you knew that or not but um, so what we're going to do is go up here we're going to change the color and let's give it just a little bit of a you know parchmenty color I probably should make the book look a little more parchment too but once again we're not going to focus too much on the type all right, so let's just bring up our options here, though, because this is all running into each other. And what we want to do is just make the font a little bit smaller. I'm just going to drag down the size a little bit. And maybe there. And if we wanted to increase the letting, which is this one here, which is the spacing in between the lines, we could do that. All right, that's good enough. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this fit the pages. So the first thing I want to do, though, is I want to duplicate this. So I have two copies of the type layer. So Control J will give you a copy um, right there. I'm just going to undo that because I'll show you another way, which is a great way to duplicate things with the move tool selected. If you hold down the Alt or the Option key, you can drag out a copy. And that works quite nicely too. All right, so why don't we make this fit? What we want to do though is we want to rasterize both of these type layers because it won't work with type. So right click and we're going to choose rasterize type. And we're going to choose rasterize type on the other one as well. Great. So why don't we start with the left? We're just going to hit the control T or command T for free transform. And then we're just going to put this into position. Now I could rotate this to kind of get things started a little bit. And obviously it's not working just yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click in here. And the right click is going to give me options. So one of the ones I want to use right now is distort. And this is going to help me find the corners. So I'm just going to go in there. I'm going to find that corner. That corner. Let's bring it into that corner there. And same thing there. So what this is doing is it's just setting the overall perspective. So I'm just going to hit enter. Obviously it's not curving yet. We'll fix that in a second. Let's grab the other one, do the same thing. So we select the top layer, control T or command T, right click, and then we're going to choose our distort. So I'm not even going to bother rotating. I'm just going to distort it from here. So let's just take that corner, take the next corner. And essentially what we're doing is we're just setting those margins. Great. And you can see I didn't really need to rotate. All right, so these are kind of sort of there. But what we want to do now is we want to curve them to match. So I'll show you how to do that. Control T once again. 
for free transform. That's control T or option T on the Mac. And then we're going to right click and we're going to choose to warp. Okay. So now that we've got this warp, all we need to do is just click and drag. See what we're doing. We're just literally just pushing these into position to follow that curvature. So we do the top, let's do the same on the bottom. And you can see what we're doing. And if you need to do it in the middle, just click and drag up there, hit enter. And you can see now it's following there. Now you could spend a little more time and get it more perfect. I'm not going to bother with that. So let's choose down here, control T, right click. Let's go back into warp again. And let's do the same thing. Let's just kind of pull that up. And we're going to pull that up. And also there, it's looking pretty good. Hit enter. And there we go. Maybe push it up a little more. So control T here for free transform, right click for warp. And I'm just going to give it just a little push there because I, I see we're kind of going into those a little bit. And I just want to kind of follow that a little bit better. There we go. And you can see it's quite easy to do that. Now, what we're going to do is I'm going to drop these down to about 80% opacity. So I'm just going to select the top layer, hit the eight key, and that'll drop it down. Grab the next layer, hit the eight key. That'll drop it down just to kind of blend it in a little bit more. Great. So why don't we go ahead now and we're going to do our lighting effect. So what we're going to do is we're just going to select all the layers. And now I want to create a new layer on top, which is a flattened version of all the layers. Now, we can hold down all the modifier keys. That's the shift option command. And I call this the Avengers. Just imagine shift is the Hulk. The command key is Captain America and the option key is Iron Man. So if we hold down these three modifiers and then the E key that will do that. So that's shift option command E on the Mac, shift control alt E on Windows. And that creates a flattened version on top. See that? So we haven't lost anything from the other layers in case we want to change things later on. Great. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to apply our lighting effect. So I want to create a spotlight effect on here. So we're going to go filter render. And before we do, make sure you're under image mode. And because I got this from Adobe stock, I know it's going to be RGB 8 bit, but make sure your image is in there because you might have photographed your own, of course. And to make it go there, you just simply click on it. So that's image mode. All right. So now we're going to choose filter render. And then under render, we're going to go down and we're going to choose lighting effects. Now it's going to load up whatever the last lighting effects were that I used. And um, oh, that's kind of cool. But we're obviously not going to use that though. So we're just going to just simply go under here. And why don't we start with just a simple spotlight. So let's go up and we'll use a soft spotlight. And this is a good place to start. Great. So what we want to do is we want to make the spotlight a little bit smaller. So I'm just going to click and drag on the corner here. This will size it and then just drag it into position. Now, of course, you can zoom out if you wanted. I'm making the sides a little bit smaller. You can see where I'm going with this. And then we're going to have the light kind of come in here. So there's a couple of things that we need to change. One of them is I'm going to take this hot spot and drop it down. So this is the area that's going to be really hot with that light just kind of hitting it. And then everything else, we want to kind of make this look like a little bit like a, a nighttime scene. So what I want to do is put a little color into the ambience. So see where it says colorize, click on there and let's choose a blue. And see what happens when I apply this blue, see how it starts to give it a cooler look around the rest of the image. So let's just click OK with that. And let's play around with that ambient. Maybe give it a little bit more light so we can start to see a little bit around there. That's looking great. And then what we want to do is we want to click in this section here. We want to give it a warmer color. So imagine there's a street light shining through a tree behind us. So let's click here and we're going to click on there and turn up the spotlight here. Given that warmer color, it could also be a, a reading lamp, you know, something like a desktop lamp there, or maybe you're outside and this is a picnic table and outside, you know, we've got a street lamp just kind of 
falling on here. So you can see how we can just kind of set that. We can move this around so you can set it how you want, put it where you want it to go. I'm going to put it there and let's play around a little bit for the intensity. If the intensity is turned all the way up and you want to make it brighter, click on color. And then under here in this color stuff, we have an intensity slider. Just give that a little push. Click OK. Obviously, it's too much because it's blowing out. See that? Sometimes you might want that, but most of the time you don't because you're losing detail. So we can just kind of pull this back a little bit now and dial it in where we want. Notice how we're getting some pretty rich lighting here now. And if you want to make this hotspot a little bit smaller, you can do that too. And see what's happening now. The hotspot's hitting the table and the rest of this is being kind of illuminated like that. All right, let's look at something. We're just going to test it and see how it looks. So we're looking at it. It's looking pretty good. But if we go into the texture channel right now and then we choose the red texture. See how if we do this, it gives it a little bit of a three dimensional look. See how this book looks like it's almost embossed now. That type in there, it's kind of cool. And see there's more texture on the wood. If you want to go the opposite direction, just type in minus one. And then what that does is now, see how it makes it look now, instead of being embossed, well, actually now it looks embossed before it looks kind of recessed. So this looks like it's kind of stamped on top of the book. I think it's kind of cool. So that's an option. You can turn that on. If you don't want to use that, of course, just turn off the channel. Now, why did I choose the red channel? I could have used any of the channels, the green or the blue. It's not really looking that different. But I chose the red because of the wood probably has more red in it than anything else. So this is looking kind of cool. All right, so why don't we just click OK. And we're just going to apply this now. All right, so if we look at what we've done so far, this is before and this is after. And you see we're really starting to create a nice mood. Now we could go in here and we could do some things if we wanted with the curves or levels to just kind of give it a little more punch. But before we do, I want to add that shadow I talked about, that gobo. So what we're going to do is create a new layer and we just call it shad because this is going to be our shadow layer. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a custom shape. So let's go over here and we're going to go down into our shapes. And you'll see these shapes are usually hiding under the line tool. Go to the custom shape tool. Now this is one way we could do it. We could use shapes. We could also use brushes. Brushes are another way that work really well. But let's have a look at this. So if we click on the shape here and let's grab this leaf here. And I'm just going to use this. I think I like this better. So we're going to put that shape in there and maybe we'll put a, a second one. In fact, why don't we create a new layer? Let's add a second one here. And I'm just going to rotate it. Control T for rotate. And let's just kind of rotate it around like this. So what we're doing is we're getting some kind of leaves in there. Just hit enter and let's copy it. Just hit the alt or the option key and let's drag off another one. And maybe one more. Let's put it there. Great. So we've got some leaves there. Now, why don't we mix all these leaves together? So let's select one, hold the shift key, select all those and hit control E and that will merge all of them together. Now what we're going to do is just blur them. Filter, blur. Let's grab a Gaussian blur. And we're going to give it a big amount. So we don't recognize what it is anymore. Let's go up really big. See what we're doing? We're just creating right there. See that leafy kind of a look? So we're creating that shadow that you're going to get from trees. Now let's go in here. We're going to change the mode of it to multiply. And if you want, you could drop the opacity down if it feels too strong. You could get just kind of play around with that and see what it's doing. It's creating that. And of course, we can move it around. And this is a gobo. And to be honest, I've never seen anyone else do this in Photoshop on a tutorial. Not saying that no one else has, I'm sure they have, but this is something that I like to do a lot. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to just finish it off with some curves to just give it a little snap. So let's go under here. We're going to grab our curves adjustment. So grab the new adjustment layer on the bottom here, and we're going to choose curves. And the curves are going to open up and we're going to give it some contrast. 
So let's click here in about the three quarters region and make that brighter. See what it's doing? It's making that light a little bit brighter there. And if we want to darken the shadows, grab it near the bottom and just kind of pull that down. So what we're doing is we're intensifying this look. Now, of course, we could experiment moving the curves underneath the shadow just by clicking it and dragging it down. And maybe we might reduce the shadow a little bit here. I feel like maybe it's a little strong. So we could take it to about there. And then if we look at what we've done, here we are bef before that was the very beginning, adding the type, of course, and then after. All right, so there was a lot of different techniques that we were using in there. Um, I showed you how to use the warp tool. I also showed you how to create the lighting effect. And then finally, I showed you how to create that gobo shadow which is a really cool kind of thing to do if you want to add that extra little bit of realism to your night scenes. Just consider dropping that kind of shadow in there. It's really going to give it that little extra something. So anyway, guys, I'd love to know what you thought of this tutorial. Let me know in the comments underneath if you learned anything new. Are you guys getting sick of these lighting effects yet? If not, I've got plenty more things we can do with this. Um, and as I mentioned at the beginning, I'm also, in addition to this, we'll see how it goes. I'm going to start doing a beginner's tutorial once a week. Um, I don't know how long I'll do that for. I'll do it for a week or two and see if it's something that you guys like. If it is, let me know the topic you'd like for the beginner's title and what would be the best day that you would like to see me do those tutorials each week. And by the way, we had a massive turnout last Thursday for our live from lockdown. Thank you guys for all of you who showed up there. And this Thursday, of course, at 1 p.m. Pacific time, we'll be going live again. So anyway, guys, if you're new here to Photoshop Cafe, first of all, welcome. Consider hitting that subscribe button right now and also turn on all those notifications. YouTube won't spam you, but what it'll do is it'll allow YouTube to let you know when I upload that new video and also when we go live. And by the way, if you are subscribed, make sure you've turned on the notifications too, or you won't know when I get those new videos live. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, if you like this, smash the like button into dust. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.